Ninth Degree Black Belt, Grandmaster Hangung Lee, President and Founder of Sangam Taekwondo and the ATA Black Belt Academies, proudly presents The Way of Traditional Taekwondo, Volume 8, Brown Belt. This is the eighth tape in a collection of reference materials covering the complete style of Sangam Taekwondo. It is designed to reinforce the materials that students learn from their instructors while attending classes. We strongly emphasize that this tape is not a replacement for classroom practice. Volume 8 of the Way of Traditional Taekwondo was developed for the second grade brown belt student. Hi, I'm Rick Hebert. Welcome to Volume 8 of the Way of Traditional Taekwondo. Congratulations on earning your brown belt. You've come a long way, both physically and mentally, since your first testing. Soon you'll be testing for your red belt. And I'm sure you're eager to begin learning your new material, so let's get to it. Enjoy the tape as Master Wanju Choi and Master Robert Jagger perform the brown belt material for you. This tape is designed to help you learn and retain the brown belt material. By attending class with your instructor, reading the way encyclopedias, and watching the way videos, you will be very well prepared for your next testing. Philosophy. As a brown belt, you're viewed as a leader by both beginner and intermediate students. To be an effective leader, you should always demonstrate the proper physical skills combined with positive mental skills such as dedication, loyalty, and respect. The symbolic interpretation for the brown belt is the tree is firmly rooted into the earth. Basics are the roots to the art of Taekwondo. All advanced techniques are built upon these basics. Deepen your roots by ascribing to a sense of loyalty and dedication to the art. For when the winds of discouragement blow, students with shallow roots will fall, while those with deep roots will remain standing. Types of movements. In this section, we will study the upset technique. The upset movement may be executed as both a block and a strike. It's best used in situations where your hands are not in the proper position to execute a normal block or strike. Upset strikes. Upset strikes are especially effective when used in close quartered self-defense situations. The angle of the strike allows for a safe and powerful execution of technique. Upset blocks. Upset blocks can be used as both offensive and defensive tools. When used with sufficient force, the technique can be equally effective as a block to redirect an attack or as a strike. As you continue to progress in Sangam Taekwondo, your use of upset techniques will increase. To develop power in your upset movements, study your seniors as they practice their forms and consult with your instructor. Stances. As a brown belt, you will begin learning the rear stance. In sparring, the rear stance enables you to adjust distance and avoid attacks without allowing your opponent to advance into your personal space. After adjusting distance, your front leg becomes positioned to counterattack using any type of number one kick. The rear stance. Prepare for the rear stance by placing your feet in the shape of an L with both heels touching. Keeping the heels in line, move your front foot forward a distance of twice your own foot length. Lift your heel up while keeping the ball of the foot firmly on the ground. Bend your knees, distributing 80% of your weight to the rear leg and 20% to the front. Make time during your training as a brown belt to practice and improve your stances. The balance and conditioning that you will gain become very valuable when you reach black belt. Strikes and blocks. Now that you have reached the rank of brown belt, your hand technique should exhibit the speed and power that is the envy of your juniors. While working out, always remember to do your best because you never know who is watching and learning from you. The upset palm block. The upset palm block is an example of the upset type of movement described earlier 
It's a very effective technique to use in close quarter situations. Begin by extending one hand in punch position while chambering the palm heel slightly behind your hip. Retract the forward hand as you bring the block up in front of your body. In the block with your palm up at solar plexus level and opposite hand next to your ribs. The low double knife hand block. The low double knife hand block is used to block attacks to your lower body. Your hands should be kept open in knife hand position during the block. Prepare with both hands extended in knife hand position. One hand chambers with palm facing your neck as the other chambers with palm facing away. Simultaneously move both hands downward, ending with both forearms and hands parallel to each other. The high-low knife hand block to the side. The high-low knife hand block to the side is a variation of the high-low block studied at Blue Belt. The variation lies in the starting and ending hand positions. Yeah. Begin with one knife hand chambered near your ear and the other chambered palm out in low block position. Simultaneously execute the blocks ending in a knife hand low and knife hand block position. The hand in the high position passes inside of the hand in the low position. The high X block. The high X block is a blocking technique that combines the strength of both arms to defend against overhead strikes. The X block uses the top of both forearms to catch the attacking tool. Begin with both hands palm up next to your ribs. Rotate your hands while moving your arms up and across your body. In with your hands crossed three to four inches below your wrist, blocking high enough to protect your head without blocking your sight. The low double outer forearm block. The low double outer forearm block is used to block attacks to your lower body. Your hand should be kept in closed fist position during the block. Yeah! Prepare with both arms extended and hands in tight fist. One hand chambers with palm facing your neck as the other chambers with palm facing away. Simultaneously move both hands downward, ending with both forearms and hands parallel to each other. The Upset Ridge Hand Strike The Upset Ridge Hand Strike has a very deceptive angle of attack. It's very hard to detect and defend against, making it a very effective technique. Chamber for the technique by placing your ridge hand palm down near your shoulder. Place your opposite arm across your body in punch position. Begin bringing your ridge hand down and across your body as your other hand retracts to your ribs. In with the ridge hand strike in a palm up position and the opposite hand at your ribs. The palm strike. The palm strike is a very effective self-defense technique. It is often taught in self-defense courses to non-martial artists because it can be learned quickly and executed effectively in a short period of time. Chamber both hands as if preparing for a punch. The striking hand should be in palm strike position with knuckles facing down next to the ribs. Extend the strike towards the target while retracting the opposite hand to the ribs. End by striking the target with the palm heel while chambering the opposite fist to the ribs. Kicks. At the brown belt level, you will learn two new jump kicks the number three jump outside crescent kick, and the number one jump side kick. The number three jump outside crescent kick. The jump outside crescent kick is an excellent kick for both offensive and defensive situations. When used for offense, the upward and outward direction of the kick helps to close the gap, allowing you to score on your opponent. The target is off on the side of your opponent's face. The striking tool is the outside edge of your foot. When used for defense, the kick is good for blocking incoming techniques, which then leave your opponent susceptible to your counter techniques. 
The number three jump outside crescent kick. Chamber the kick during the jumping motion. The striking leg should bend slightly as the base leg chambers upwards beneath your body. Extend your striking leg to strike the target at the peak of your jump. Land first with your base leg, followed by your kicking leg. The number one jump side kick. Chung Jung One, the brown belt form, is the first form that requires you to use the jump side kick as a number one technique. Prepare to kick by standing in a closed stance. Bend your knees and jump. Chamber your kicking leg in side kick position and your base leg upwards beneath your body. Extend the side kick at the peak of your jump. Land first with your base leg, followed by your kicking leg. Yeah! Training tip. The number one jump side kick can be practiced using a heavy standing bag yeah! or with the assistance of a partner holding a body shield. See your instructor to purchase any of the training bags or pads that appear in this video. Form Chung Jung Wan is the eighth form that you learn in Sangam Taekwondo. It completes the same western half of the Sangam Star as did Sangam 4, but does so with more advanced techniques and in a figure eight design. Chung Jung Wan has 12 phases, lettered A, B, C, D, E, F, and opposites of A, B, C, D, E, and F. Phase A, upset palm block, punch, punch. Phase A, opposite, upset palm block, punch, punch. Phase B, double knife hand block, high low knife hand block. Number two, side kick, high low knife hand block. Phase C, Reverse punch. Number two front kick, round kick, low double knife hand block, reverse upset knife hand strike. Phase D, upset ridge hand strike, horizontal fingertip thrust. Number three jump outside crescent kick, reverse palm strike. Phase E, X block, knife hand strike, punch. Phase F, low double outer forearm block. Number one jump side kick, double outer forearm block. Phase F opposite. Low double outer forearm block, number one jump side kick, double outer forearm block. Phase D opposite, upset ridge hand strike, horizontal fingertip thrust, number three jump outside crescent kick, reverse palm strike. Phase E opposite, X block, knife hand strike, punch. Phase C opposite, reverse punch. Number two front kick, round kick, low double knife hand block, reverse upset knife hand strike. Phase B opposite, double knife hand block, high low knife hand block. Number two side kick, high low knife hand block. Begin Chung Jung Wan in the at ease position. Relax in this position until given the next command. Chariot. Kyan ye. Chung bi. Si jang. Chung Jung Wan has 44 movements and three key ops. The key ops are performed during movements 12, 22, and 32. Baro. Shio. Self-defense. Self-defense movements should be practiced until they become both natural and spontaneous. The more you practice, the more natural the movements will become. Number one. Counterclockwise turn to double arm trap. 
double punch to midsection, elbow strike to head, thumb strike to brachial plexus origin. Number two, radial nerve strike, clockwise turn with wrist lock, backhand to brachial plexus origin, back fist to head, hair grab, step back, takedown. Always vary your method of practicing self-defense. Use different partners and change the angles of attack. Remember, when it comes to defending oneself, you can never overpractice. Free sparring. At this level, it's important that you understand the system that Grandmaster Lee has designed to help you achieve proficiency in sparring. The system began at White Belt, where you learned forms designed to help you acquire proper technique. Next, you learned pre-planned one-steps, which taught you about timing, distance, and change of direction. Eventually, you were exposed to free sparring, where you were taught to react relative to your opponent's direction change, distance, and offensive techniques. You also learned about the importance of blocking and moving, using combinations, countering, and footwork. Now that you're a brown belt, you should be sparring smarter, not harder than your juniors. Start focusing upon controlling the distance between you and your opponent. Maintaining proper distance will save you from throwing unnecessary blocks. Say an opponent attacks with a punch, an inexperienced sparer may simply execute a block. An experienced sparer would evade the attack while remaining in scoring distance, saving the block to instead use as a scoring strike. It's been said that whomever controls the distance controls the match. So remember, spar smarter, not harder. Review. Refresh your memory on footwork and distancing by studying chapter seven of the Brown Belt Encyclopedia. Board breaking. As a purple belt, you were required to break a board using a hand technique. As a blue belt, you were required to break using a kick. At brown belt, you will break using both hand and kicking techniques. Breaking options. Brown belts have two breaking options to choose from. An elbow strike and a side kick, or an elbow strike and a front kick. Breaking Basics Although requirements change with each advance in rank, the basics of breaking remain the same. Choose the correct size boards, set up your boards, ask permission to break, execute the breaks. Students may execute their breaks in any order. Each receives three attempts to complete their breaks. Scoring depends upon the number of stations broke and the number of attempts needed to break. Training tip. There should be no pause between the breaking of your first and second station. To achieve this, set up your boards as if in a combat situation. Break your first station and transition smoothly into your second. Pausing between stations demonstrates poor setup and or lack of confidence. Breaking. Once your boards are properly set and permission to break has been granted, you may break your boards. Breaking option number one, the elbow strike and side kick. To break with the elbow, shift your weight forward, rotate your hips, and extend the shoulder and elbow through the board. Quickly transition into the side kick, driving your knee forward, penetrating through the board with the heel of the foot. Breaking option number two, the elbow strike and front kick. To 
break with the elbow, shift your weight forward, rotate your hips, and extend your shoulder and elbow through the board. Quickly transition into the front kick, driving your knee forward, penetrating through the board with the ball of the foot. Remember that techniques can be executed in any order. Once the boards are set up and you receive permission to begin, you should break both stations in quick succession. Always end by bowing to the judges and thanking your holders. To learn more about board breaking, refer to Volume 8 of the Way of Traditional Taekwondo Encyclopedia for brown belts. Well, that's the end of another great tape. I hope you're getting excited about your next testing because both the end and the beginning is near. The end of your training as a color belt and the beginning of your training as a black belt. Now, that's something to get excited about. I'll see you at Red Belt. One more time, sir. It'll be fine. This is not woo. Second. <laughs> 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 <laughs>